What is going on everybody? It is Alex from Everything for iPod and today I have a benchmark comparison between the brand new iPad Air and some of its siblings such as the iPhone 5S and iPad Mini as well as a competitor, the Nexus 7. Benchmark tests are great, but they don't really mean anything unless you have other devices to compare them to, and that's what a benchmark is really for, comparing device to device. I've chosen three additional, very popular devices. This way you can get an understanding of how the iPad Air actually compares to other devices out on the market. I'll be doing two different benchmark tests in this video, the first one being Geekbench, which will test the processing power, and the next one being 3D Mark, which will test the graphics power. But before I do that, I want to show you the specs of the devices in case you're wondering, so I'll flash them up on the screen right now. You can pause the video and take a look at them. Now we're inside Geekbench, and I'm going to run a Geekbench test on all four of these devices. Devices. Now it's testing the processing power right now and once it's done testing that it's going to give us a numerical score at the end. Now that score doesn't really mean much on one device like I said so that's why we have four different devices. We're going to skip to the end of the test, get the score for each device and then use those scores to compare which device is fastest. Now that all four devices are finished the Geekbench test we can take a look at the results. On each device you can see that there are two scores posted, one being a single core score on the left and on the right is a multi-core score. We're going to take a look at that multi-core score. As you can see, the iPad Air has a score of 2,688, which is the highest, meaning the fastest, out of all four of these devices, which is to be expected as it is the newest device and has the fastest and newest internals. The iPhone 5S, all the way on the right-hand side, trails the iPad Air just by a little bit, which is also to be expected as it has the same processor as the iPad Air. Coming in third place is the Nexus 7 with a score of 1,917, and then way below that is the iPad Mini with a score of 497. Now again, like I keep saying, those scores don't really mean much in terms of power, they're just used for comparison between the devices, so maybe you don't have a great understanding of what this actually means. Well, now we're going to go on to the 3D Mark test, where you're actually going to be able to see some live results and get a better understanding of the performance of these devices. Now we're in 3D Mark, and I'm going to start up the Ice Storm Extreme test. I tried to start them as close as possible to each other. It didn't really work out great, but you're still going to be able to see the results of the test. This is called the Ice Storm Extreme test because we're really stressing out the internals of all four of these devices. Most of the apps and games you're going to be downloading from the App Store and Play Store aren't going to require nearly this much graphics power. This is simply to test the maximum amount of graphics power each of these devices can produce. What we're looking for here is the frame rate on each one of these devices, and we're going to see how smoothly each one renders the graphics. I'm going to stop talking for a little bit and just let you watch so you can see how they do. As you can probably tell, the iPad Air runs everything with no problems, everything looked very smooth. And the iPhone 5S also looked very smooth and for the most part was on the same speed as the iPad Air. The Nexus 7 experienced a tiny bit of lag, but for the most part, it ran pretty smoothly. And as for the iPad mini, it was extremely laggy and almost hard to watch. And while I was recording, the app actually crashed and just stopped the test dead in its tracks. Does that make it a bad device? No, not at all. All four of these devices are very capable and the iPad mini is only one year old. It still can run pretty much any game in the App Store without a problem. It's just when you throw an extreme graphics test at it, it doesn't really perform the way you want it to. That concludes my benchmark tests on the iPad Air. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already so you don't miss out on any of my future iPad Air content. And I also have some other cool things planned. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave it a like and also comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on the new iPad Air. Did you pick one up? Let me know. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos and I'll catch you in my next one.